And welcome to a special edition of Capital Talk, a program we hope will have an impact on the future of Kenya, now more than ever. I'm Jeff Kanenge. Why do I say special? Because this is the holiest week in the calendar. That's right, the week where they nailed that man to the cross because they just didn't understand him. And my guest today is in a similar kind of situation. A lot of people simply don't understand him, especially when he makes predictions. He predicted the post-election violence on record. It happened, hardly anyone listened. More recently, he predicted the earthquake in Haiti. That's right, more, more than two months before it happened, he predicted it, nobody listened, more than 200,000 people ended up dead. It's all on record. After that, are you sitting back? He predicted the earthquake in Chile. More than a year before it happened, nobody listened. He kept saying, it's coming. Folks, sit back, because this man, who studied to be a molecular DNA type of expert, and he did that at the University of Illinois in Chicago and also the Cancer Institute of New Jersey. Qualified doctor. One day the Lord spoke to him and he followed the Lord. He has a huge following across Kenya, Africa and the world. He's just come back recently, very recently, from Venezuela where he was preaching to literally millions and millions of people. This man has a lot to say about just about everything, including the Constitution, the sticky issues, abortion, Cadiz courts, Ocampo, the future of Kenya. On this Easter weekend, folks, sit back because the prophet is on the bench, simply known as Dr. David Awar. Prophet, doctor, good to see you. Thank you. Welcome back home. Thank you. I know you've been on the road a bit and I know it's been very, very strenuous and you've been really working the last few months. But tell me, the scariest part for me is predicting an earthquake like the one that happened in Haiti that literally decimated that tiny little island, killed a predicted that more than two months before that. Thank you, Jeff Koinange. Uh, I'm very blessed to come back to your very noble program here. And I know that uh, in this program, uh, the Capital Talk, especially now more than ever before, it becomes more and more important that uh, the people of Kenya will be able to hear on what the Lord is saying regarding their nation, the happenings in the nation. They see a lot of unfolding, at times uh, confusion. Is God with us? Is God not with us? But uh, you've just mentioned on uh, the mission to Venezuela. We just arrived from Venezuela. It was tremendous. Millions and millions of people listened to this tremendous message of the Lord. And the Lord healed a lot of people. And then even most importantly, it was telecast. Uh, it was streamed on the web. So globally, people were watching, people were following everything the Lord spoke there. Now, uh, regarding the Haiti earthquake prophecy, Jeff, the Lord sent me to this precious island. They call it the island of Hispaniola. And that island is split by, I mean, it's divided by an artificial line, a border. On this side is uh, Haiti, and on this side is Dominican Republic. And so I was invited by the pastors of the Dominican Republic. And so when I arrived there on November 22nd and 23rd, 2009, the city at which I had the first meeting is called Puerto Plata. That means a port that is like a plate, you know, in Spanish. And so it's at that place that I began to pronounce the coming of a historic earthquake that would literally shake and almost demolish the island. And then on the 24th of November 2009, I went to the second largest city, which is Santiago, and said, a historic earthquake is coming to shake you if you don't repent. And I said, I see you running for your lives. I see death coming here. And then 25th, 6th, 7th, I was in the city of Higüe. That's November 2009. And so, again, m less than two months after that prophecy, we see that on January 12th, 2010, that prophecy came to pass. And of course, it shook the, the whole earth, was shaken, because they say, 
people feared when they saw the earthquake that hit Haiti, literally every nation feared. And why is God doing these things? I went to Chile January 2009. I was in a big television program called TVN, Televisión Nacional de Chile, which is really global, five continents. I preached, I met the bishop's council. I went up to Concepcion, which is where the AP center was. I warned, I said, look, I see the ocean coming out. I see floods coming. Then I said, I also see the ocean vomiting on the land, meaning the fishes and everything would be vomited on your land. And I told them that the reason the Lord is asking me to warn you of the historic earthquake, the word is historic, the key word, is because there is a state of perpetual sin and sexual sin in this land, homosexuality, name it, and the Lord is asking the church to lead the entire nation into repentance, which means to return to the Lord. I left Chile that January 2009. Come February 27th, at 3.34 a.m. in the morning, that prophecy was accurately fulfilled. And so the question is this, why are these humongous events taking place? Why is the Lord sending me to these nations? I just came back from Venezuela, and I told them I see an earthquake coming there. Now the issue is this. God Almighty is now reproving the church and the land. Let me put it in simple language. He is purifying the church and the nations. These things are in the Bible. And that's why it's such a privilege for your Kenyan audience to be able to hear this, to be able to see this, that they may know that surely time has come to turn away from sin, that God may have his way in our lives and the nation. Yeah. Prophet, tell me something. Isn't it amazing? You know, people think about this. This island you talk about is one island, two countries. So the island is joined. But on the, the part you preached, Dominican Republic, nothing was touched. <laughs> but right across the border, Haiti was decimated. I, I, I did not even imagine you would ask that question because that is such a critical question. Now, when I went to the Dominican Republic, they received it. All the television channels were focused on this message. The nation, radios, live, they invited me to studios, the radio stations. And they received this message and began to repent. Like you can see, I was going around. The closest I went to Haiti is the city of Santiago, which is close to the border. And the, the, the radios, the radio stations were actually broadcasting across the entire island. Mm. The TVs can be received across the island. So even Haiti was watching. Haiti was listening. Now listen to this. Now, the Haiti part that failed to repent, that failed to receive this word, was hit very hard. But listen, I told the people that whether the Lord brings destruction here or not, he must shake even the Dominican Republic just to prove to you that the prophet of the Lord has been here. Because many have come lying. How will they know that surely, because if we repented and didn't happen, how do you know that God sent him? And so I told them, God must for sure shake them. And listen, when the historic Haiti earthquake prophecy was fulfilled, Santo Domingo, the capital city of the Dominican, was shaken so violently People ran from the top buildings, the, 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 the so-called skyscrapers. They ran from the apartment buildings. They were evacuated, but not even one person broke a foot. And yet, just by border, just an artificial line, on the other side, more than 300,000 people died. That just overemphasizes the power of repentance, the power of a nation that is able to listen to when God has spoken to her. And that has a lot of trickle down, that has a lot of ramification to the Kenyan situation. I was, I was just getting there, doctor. I was just getting there right now because you have called for repentance in Kenya. No one's listening, or few are listening. What needs to be done, doctor? Because obviously we are at a point where we have a constitution that's about to be uh, approved and sent to a referendum. But elections are not that far away, but we haven't healed from that last election. What needs to be done? I think that is most critical right now, especially that you can ask it 
uh, ask that question at this very critical threshold, we all know, every Kenyan, every person in this land now knows that the nation of Kenya is sitting at a critical junction when she has to make certain very important decisions. Now listen, Jeff, it never ceases to amaze me that just a few months ago, I sat at this bench and you asked me what is the way forward. And I mentioned the fact that every time you have a lull before the storm, it does not mean peace. And I mentioned very, very clearly that the Lord Almighty, he spoke certain requirements on the land. He expects Kenyans to listen to him because that's the same God who watches over Kenya. He's the same God who made Kenya the island of peace within a sea of turbulence. Jeff, you have covered a lot of nations in this continent, even in this region, and you've seen the tremendous turbulence that has befallen them. We have refugee camps from, or people from Somalia, from Sudan, from where. That just bespeaks of the favor that the Lord had bestowed on Kenya. That Kenya may be a refuge for his people that are hurting. Now, only the Lord can do that. Now, for the Lord, for Kenya finally, to have attain the countenance of tempest, of commotion, of confusion, of violence, the bloodbath that was a bloodletting. Only the Lord must have withdrawn his peace. Only the Lord must have withdrawn his protection from Kenya. And that's why this message of repentance and the need for Kenyans to return back to the Lord has never been so critical as it is right now. You've mentioned on the Constitution Right now, there are a lot of issues, they, 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 what people watch, how it's being debated and so on. It does not bespeak peace. There are people who are the consumers of the peace. And these are the grassroots people. When they see your leaders, you know, acting as though they are not in one accord, they translate it, they consume it, and they transduce it differently. And so those are the people in the grassroots. And those are the people I'm so much concerned about. The poor woman there, the, 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 the poor kids, or the orphans. And now, if you look at where the nation is now towards the ICC, you just mentioned the prosecutor coming. Yes. These are things that are bound to shake the nation. And so this is the time at which Kenya needs the Lord. There is no other time at which Kenya needed to hearken unto the Lord more than she does today. Why? Because it is God that provides peace. Even the Bible says, a rebellious nation has many leaders. <laughs> we see it today. The politics that is being run in this country is now degenerating into ethnicity, ethnic politics, tribal politics. We see every community wants to raise their own leader. And I think any normal thinking Kenyan knows that's not a good recipe even as we, we negotiate the corner towards 2012. The nation ought to have healed by now. The nation ought to have repented to the Lord and caused the Lord to bring his healing. Look at the Constitution, for example. I have spoken this over and over again. I have said one thing. I have said that the church is sitting at the center of the healing process for the nation. Why? Because the Bible is so clear the church is the light of the nation. The church has the authority of God Almighty, the authority to pray for rain when there is drought, things that you cannot buy with money, the authority to bring peace when there is commotion, when there is uh, tribulation. The church has the authority to pray for even the sick to be healed. Now listen, uh, Jeff, right now, I still reiterate the same statement that the church, even as now she says, look, abortion is wrong. There's no question about that. Everybody knows that life is given by God. It's God given. And we ought to, 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 to save God life, even as given by God. Everybody knows that abortion is not right. If you legalize abortion, then now people have the license. <laughs> To just, you know, do whatever you see happening in all the other nations, you know. 
Listen, precious people. Even as I talk to your viewers, Jeff, what is going to matter is this. That the church of Christ will, first of all, rise to the stature. The stature that will give her authority. That when she says this is wrong, the government will listen. When she says this is wrong, the Kenyans, the people, will listen. Why do I say so? Because, listen, respect and authority is earned. Even our Lord Jesus himself, he earned the respect with which we now walk when we wear his name. He earned it on the cross. For the church to come out and be the, the voice of redress, the voice to reprove the land, the church of Christ must first of all have a track record, a track record of righteousness, Jeff. God is not a God of confusion. He cannot mix evil and righteousness, darkness and light. Now listen to this. It is good enough to come and say abortion is wrong. But it's a totally another thing for you to rebuke abortion. And yet when you look back, even on Sundays, you watch some of the, the, the preachings in this land on TV, you see people preaching a gospel that is essentially commercialized. You see M Pesa numbers flowing at the bottom of the screen. So I am preaching water and behind the scenes, I'm drinking wine. That's what the church is saying, essentially. And with such a track record, Kenyans have grown to maturity of a certain level now. They know the truth. You cannot come and lie to them and say this when they know, in actual fact, during the post-election mayhem, the church was also involved. So there has to be a process that will delink the church from her old past, which is very sinful, and the, 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 the sexual sin that we have seen happening in the church, the media has covered it. The, the lies, the false prophets in the church, the false apostles, the gospel of money, all these things that every single right-thinking Kenyan knows are not of God. The church must delink through repentance. And until the church of Christ in this land, which is supposed to be the light of God, until the church of Christ, Jeff, will delink from her evil past, it will continue to haunt her. Even if she rises up and says, this is wrong, but they will say, but you haven't repented of this. But you are still wearing the image of sin here. And that's why, Jeff, the message of repentance into this nation has never become so critical and so crucial as it does today. And that's why even in this program, this becomes one of the pivotal programs that can actually tip the balance. Why? Because you have even mentioned the chief prosecutor coming. You see that? How can Kenya stand that test without the hand of God over the land? How does the hand of God approach the land, protect the land? Through the church. The church is the instrument of God. Prophet, I want to talk about that because that's very crucial. Also, I want to talk about... I think there's a line in the Bible that says something like, do not mock God. Because God has a, has a funny sense of humor. And if you mock him, he will show you who's in charge. I want to talk more about that because it looks like we are mocking God. And also, let's talk more about the Cadiz courts. Another clause, contentious clause in the Constitution. And also, bottom line, where do we go from here, Prophet? Because this nation, like you said, is at a threshold. But there's something missing. Yeah, There's something missing. Let's take a break. Good grief, are you sitting back, the prophet? No wonder the church disregards this man. He speaks the truth. He speaks from his heart without fear or favor. He also speaks to the Lord. Who are we to question that? But I tell you, this bench is where it all goes down. So don't even think of going away because capital talk is coming back right after this. And welcome back to a special edition of Capital Talk. I tell you, 
I know when to keep quiet because when people like Prophet Dr. David Awar are on the bench, it's my turn to sit back. And I hope you're sitting back too because this man fears nobody, speaks from the heart, speaks from experience, speaks to God. Prophet, Kadi's court is another very contentious clause in the Constitution. This one, it, what's going on? I mean, Kadi's court has always been there from day one and it's not affecting other religions at all. They just want to be able to have their own kind of family law. Thank you, Jeff. That is yet another very important question at this hour. Now, there's one, th there's one thing we must get right even as Kenyans. It's absolutely clear and true that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. That is absolutely clear to all Kenyans. It's also clear that only our Lord Jesus died for mankind, died for the church. And so if Kenya is to be able to reach her appanage, her inheritance, her destiny even as charted out by the Lord, Kenya will have to walk the way of the Lord. And so it is true that only Jehovah is God. There is no other God. But I want to make this very clear, even as I say this. The authority, the authority with which anyone can come up and say, you know what, that institution is wrong, this person is right, this person is wrong, that authority can only come from God, even as demonstrated by his power. I have always spoken this very clearly to this nation, that if there is any battle the church has to engage in, has to get involved in, that battle should belong to the Lord. It should not be a physical battle. Why do I say so? Because the Bible is very clear that when you are in right standing with the Lord, then the Lord fights your battles. You cease to go out there, you cease to, to do a physical, a manual tussling with anything or everybody. God prepares the environment such that he fights your battle, you score victory. I just shared the other day how, where I preach, Muslims come and get healed from horrendous diseases, bleeding diseases, crippled, lame, blind, name it, and Hindus too. And they come and say, look, the God you are preaching, I want to receive him today because I've been healed here. I said, oh, you've been healed here. What was your condition? And you see them beautifully taking Jesus of Nazareth. Did I fight that battle? Only the Lord fought that battle. And so there's so much power in being in right standing with the Lord that the Lord may do your battle. We should learn from this. The church has to learn from this. She has to spend more time to move position where she wafted away, drifted to, and move back to be in right standing with the Lord that when she kneels down to pray for the nation, God listens. When she says, Lord, there is a stumbling block ahead of me here. Can you remove it? God himself removes it. Who can fight God? So the church ought to understand that it will take her going back to the right standing with the Lord for the Lord to fight for her. Otherwise, God can make the church become an empty vessel. We've seen it in Israel in the Bible. We saw that when Israel fell out from right standing with God, he even raised Nebuchadnezzar to attack his house and cause tempest to burn things there, prophesied by Jeremiah. And that's why the only way the church is going to surmount some of the mountains and the tasks ahead of her is by her embracing repentance. Repentance is the only avenue, the only route that the church can use to get back to right standing with God. And what do I mean by repentance here? I mean repenting, turning away from sin, and then embracing righteousness, embracing holiness, so that when she comes up and says, look, this is wrong, corruption is wrong, Anyone can look back at her track record and say, she is justified to rebuke corruption. Okay, so tell me, Prophet, once we do that, once the nation does that, once the church does that, repents, will we be on the right, right track 
will we see a light at the end of the tunnel, which is not an oncoming train? Th 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 oh, I'm amazing that you put it that way, an oncoming train. So it's, um, it's very, very interesting right now that within the tempest that you see happening to Kenya now, she has to handle the chief prosecutor who is coming. She has to handle the constitution. She has to handle the split. You know, parliamentarians sometimes say this, another group of parliamentarians say this, and then you get confused. You ask, are they tribal leaders? Are they national leaders? So it looks like it's very confusing in her countenance now. But for the church to overcome this, she has to understand one thing. The God of Israel, the God that gave us Jesus of Nazareth, the only one and only Savior that saved mankind on the cross. For the church to be able to overcome this, she has to get her direction back to the Lord in repentance and holiness. But listen to this. The same God she worships is the same God who delivered Israel from Egyptian slavery. So look at the potency. Look at the power of Jehovah in, in delivering the church. The same God who wrote so hard for Israel, removing her from Egyptian slavery into the promised land, is the same God the church is worshipping, and he is more than able to clean the church up, heal the nation, and then bring light at the end of the tunnel. So there is so much power. You get the example of one island, Dominican Republic, Haiti. One repents, both are shaken. One has 300,000 dead, another one, nobody died. That is the amount of power that Jehovah has even to deliver this nation. Now, you have also mentioned on uh, the, the prosecutor who is coming. What ought Kenyans to do? We, let me tell you, I have seen a dream. I saw a dream on 14th of March before I left for Venezuela. And you know, Kenyans need to seek God. That's all I can tell you. They need to cry to the Lord. Why? Is it ugly what you saw in your dream? No, because what I saw in the dream, I saw people giving their kids Say, please take my kid. Even if I have no place in that truck, take my kid. You know, so the bottom line is that God is faithful. He sent me here as one whom he shows what is coming. That is love. I just came from other nations. You presented here, Chile, Haiti, and I saw what was coming. And the ones that repent, he faithfully delivers. I see that there is a lot of love of God over Kenya. The Lord is jealous over this land. Why? The nation to which Jehovah speaks is a blessed nation. The Bible even says, only those he loves, he corrects, he rebukes. And that's why I believe this is the most important time for the nation to embrace repentance. Look at most recently when... Uh, the Lord sent me out to call for repentance and ask people, after repenting, bear forth the fruit of repentance. If you are sitting on sofa sets of somebody in a refugee camp, there's no way you can repent and say you are right with God. When the owner is in the refugee camp and you are sitting on the sofa sets or you are in a house whose iron sheets were uprooted from, from other homes, look at how people came out, uprooted doors that they looted, brought everything, poisonous arrows in hundreds of thousands. That just bespeaks the power of repentance. In fact, the Lord is using that to say that, look, through this avenue of repentance lies your healing as a nation. So surely, yes, when the nation repents, then there will be a lot of light at the end of the tunnel and not an oncoming train. Mm. I've always wanted to ask you this, Prophet. Why you? Why are you the one whom the Lord speaks to? Why you? Do you ask yourself that sometimes? Because the dreams that you see can be scary sometimes. Exactly, you know. Well, I know that I don't have much time, even in our busy schedule. Right now, we have a lot of meetings across the globe, you know. And every month is fully engaged, and every nation is so hungry for this message of righteousness, the message of restoration and the revival. We just came back from Venezuela. The cripples got up and walked. It was, it was broadcast live across the globe, streamed. It was streamed over the internet. 
babies that were born blind, the eyes open, and then the message of righteousness was preached and the coming of the Messiah. There is a great hunger for this across the globe. But listen to this. I may not have enough time to sit down and say, Lord, why me? Because God is sovereign. He's totally sovereign. He chooses whom he speaks to. Only he knows why he speaks to one person and says, go tell them. Only he is God Almighty. And so when he privileged me, he blessed me to be his friend, whom he can share with things and send me to his people, even having seen as a watchman, seeing what is coming, and sound the trumpet, say, be careful. I see some people coming. I see things coming. It's such a privilege, so much of a privilege that I cannot even question. But let me tell you, the underlying factor is that it is so humbling even to walk into a country and tell them a historic earthquake that you've never seen is coming. For example, Haiti, they had not seen such an earthquake since 1770. Generations were born and died without seeing it. And so when you walk there and begin to proclaim it, at times they even doubt. And then when it happens, you see the entire globe, the complete four ends of the earth, gripped with fear. So it's very humbling even to be the friend of the Lord, the friend of Jehovah. And so for Kenya, I would, I would still insist that if Kenya will not repent and turn to the Lord, there will still exist a perpetual controversy between the Lord and the land. Mm. And that can only bring affliction. Bottom line, are you going to urge your millions of followers, and I know you have millions of followers because they have responded last time you were on the bench, millions of people responded. Are you going to urge them to vote in this referendum? Well, you know, one beautiful thing about the message the Lord sent me with, the mission the Lord engaged me on, and the ministry he has given me, which now, of course, is a global is bring a revival of righteousness and holiness, preparing the way for the Lord across the ends of the earth. But one thing about this ministry is that the Lord has not allowed me to participate in raw politics, raw unprocessed politics, you know, and say, do this, don't do this. The one thing that the Lord has persistently taught me is to show them the path to righteousness. Because therein, lies the wisdom of God for them. When they will walk in righteousness, they will be able to discern what is the Lord's, what is not the Lord's. So in that way, the nation will be able to drift towards the Lord, to return to the Lord. But to go out and be, you know, partisan, that is what has essentially eroded the authority of the Lord in the church. Because she's gotten involved in raw politics, and then she's been seen as partisan. And you were just mentioning, you know, just a few minutes ago when you said God has a sense of humor. Let us be very careful that even the church leaders, as they speak, let them make sure they're speaking up from the Lord's position. That means you have to, first of all, walk the talk. That when they see you and hear you talk, then they will know ah, what he's saying is right. Because then the Lord will protect you. But at times, you know, yes. the Lord can pull the rug from beneath, yeah. if and, you're not careful. And do not mock God. No, you cannot. Nobody can. Especially considering now the global events as they're happening. You can see, when I spoke to Haiti, I spoke to Chile, I spoke about Katrina coming, I spoke about the first Asian tsunami, the earthquake that was coming to Lake Malawi region more than three years before it happened. And I even mentioned the exact hour. I said 1 a.m. in the morning. It's amazing, the first one happened at 6 p.m. But the next one happened at 1.19 a.m. There had to be an earthquake at 1 a.m. to prove that the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The earthquake to Pakistan, the earthquake to Iran, the earthquake to Russia. We can see that surely only the Lord can be able to cause one to go and speak such, what you term, ominous words, but such words of reproving the land, and then they accurately come to pass. But what do you tell those people who call you a prophet of doom? Because that's all you predict is doom. Oh, I, I think of, the, of all the questions you've asked, this is probably, probably the, 
the, the, the, the peak of it now. Why? Because when you look at Jesus of Nazareth, when Jesus of Nazareth gave the prophecy about his return in Matthew 24, in Mark 13, Luke 21, and of course John did not record it, but John received the revelation, the transcript, translation of it, and put in Revelation chapter 6. But listen, when you listen to Jesus tell the church, tell the nations, tell the disciples, the dispensation and the signs that would mark that dispensation before he returns, he talks about deception in the church. He talks about famines and earthquakes. He talks about wars and rumors of wars. You would quickly run and say, look, he is a prophet of doom. I am so privileged for anyone to call me the prophet of doom. You know why? Because then I can be very sure I'm walking the footprints of the Lord. And at the same time, do you feel as misunderstood as he was? Exactly. I don't know what's leading you to ask this, these questions. These are the most critical questions, really. Why? Because the Lord promised us in the Bible that if we are to walk in the highway of holiness, which is the path of the Lord, where you rebuke sin, where you, re you, 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 you talk about the rejection of sin, the rejection of the world, and all its seductive practices, you know, if you are to walk in that path of righteousness that you see in Isaiah 35, verses 8 and 9, obviously, the world system will fight you. So, they will fight you by misunderstanding you, claiming to misunderstand you. And so, it's a beautiful thing. In fact, the true signature fingerprint of God's approval over your life is that the world fight you. The world rejects you. The world misunderstands you. If the world does not misunderstand you, in this dispensation of deception, of error and sickness in the church, then you would have to go back to the Lord and re-question your mission. Ask him to give you another gospel. If, because if the world will help you to accomplish the mission given to you by the Lord, join you, then surely the Lord has not sent you. <laughs> Keep walking, prophet. Keep walking. The Lord bless you, Jeff. Good to see you. Thank you. And God bless you too. Thank you. All the best. Good grief. I could talk to the prophet all day long. This man, I tell you, it's scary what he sees. It's amazing what he predicts. And it all comes true. Sooner or later, the church is going to have to understand this man and embrace him. He says we all need to repent. At this critical juncture where Kenya is right now, we all need to repent. That's the only way we can move forward into the future of this beautiful nation. What a guest, what a show. The prophet on the bench speaking out, speaking up, speaking to a nation. You cannot find these kinds of guests anywhere else. No, no way. But right here on the bench, on the award-winning station K24. Or as always, we are, even in times of holiness, all Kenyan, and in the name of Jesus, all the time. Thank you, Prophet. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you. You too. Capital Talk is recorded at the Fairview Hotel, the country hotel in town.